Spectrum is a range of radio waves used for communication. It exists all around us. The radio shows you listen to travel on these waves. So also the data you transmit through your phones, the texts you send, the tweets you put out, your Facebook updates, the web pages you browse. So with all this traffic going back and forth, the signals could end up bumping into each other. Anybody broadcasting signals at any frequency they like would mean absolute chaos. That's where the government comes in. Now imagine spectrum as a highway and bands as lanes on that highway to regulate traffic or data. The government has to decide which bands can be used for which type of service. So what's 2G? It is second generation wireless technology. Basically different technologies were developed to leverage different bands. Now how does a mobile company access these bands on the highway or spectrum? You need a license to operate on the highway and you need to pay a fee for Spectrum. The government has two options here. Either auction Spectrum to companies who use that Spectrum to offer services or allocate Spectrum to companies on a first-come, first-served basis. How did the 2G scam come to be? In 2007, the government decided it will give out licenses on a first-come, first-served basis. Companies were asked to apply for licenses before 1st October 2007 and pay license fees. It was decided that this would be Spectrum linked license, which means the company that got the license would get the Spectrum for free and didn't have to pay separately for it. Under license conditions, the mobile operators had to meet certain rollout obligations, which was to cover 10% of the district headquarters in the first year, 50% of the district in three years. On January 10th, 2008, the Department of Telecom under Minister A. Raja arbitrarily brought forward the cutoff date from 1st October 2007 to 25th September 2007, which meant large number of applications received after September 25th became ineligible. The CBI, which investigated the case, alleged Minister Raja advanced the cutoff date to favor firms like Unitech and Swan Telecom in return for kickbacks or bribes. Later the same day, the Department of Telecom posted an announcement on its website saying those applicants eligible under the new 25th September deadline will have to report to Sanchar Bhavan between 3.30 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. to be issued licenses. It is alleged that Raja Secretary A.K. Chandolia and Telecom Secretary Siddharth Behura physically shut counters during this one-hour window to block other telecom companies. What's worse, licenses were given in 2008 at 2001 market rates. So who benefited? Unitech. Unitech Wireless had no experience in the telecom sector. Unitech got the license for a throwaway price of 1,661 crores. It sold 60% stake to Telenor Asia for 6,200 crores, making a windfall without even rolling out its mobile service. Swan. Swan, the telecom arm of DB Realty, also benefited from A. Raja's largesse. Swan had no experience in the sector but was awarded 2G license for 1,500 crores. Swan sold 45% of its stake to UAE-based Etisalat for 4,500 crores. Swan did not meet its rollout obligation. It didn't even build a single mobile tower. Swan Telecom is alleged to have given kickbacks to the tune of 200 crore rupees through a maze of companies to Kalengar TV, owned mainly by DMK MP and party patriarch Karunanidhi's daughter Kanimuri and his wife Dayalu Amal. The CBI, while arguing Kanimuri's complicity in the conspiracy, has referred to the phone conversations in the Radia tapes that reveal Kanimuri lobbying hard for A. Raja to be made Telecom Minister again when the UPA returned to power in 2009. Reliance ADAG Telecom It is alleged that Swan Telecom acted as a front for Anil Ambani-led Reliance Telecom while applying for licenses in 13 operating areas. Since Reliance Telecom was already operating all the service areas for which Swan had applied for licenses, the application should have been declared ineligible. Accused number one, then Telecom Minister A. Raja and once the DMK's rising star, the CBI says acted against the advice of the TRAI, the Law and Finance Ministries, and even misled then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. Raja is alleged to have used his wife's bank accounts in Mauritius and Seychelles to deposit money he received as kickbacks. 
It was the Comptroller and Auditor General that quantified the presumptive loss to the Exchequer in 2G Spectrum allocation at 1.76 lakh crores. This figure of 1.76 lakh crores was arrived at on the basis of revenue realised through 3G auction. While 1.76 lakh crores came to define the scam in popular perception, the Joint Parliamentary Committee looking at the pricing and allocation of telecom licences dismissed the loss calculation, saying the CAG cherry-picked TRAI recommendations to establish that 2G and 3G prices are comparable. While the calculation of presumptive loss itself may be contested, the 2G scam is widely viewed as the biggest case of state corruption. In 2011, Time magazine listed the case at number two on their top 10 abuses of power list, just behind the Watergate scandal, which cost Richard Nixon his presidency. Mm -hmm.